The FBI identified a British national as the man who held four people, including a rabbi, hostage at a Colleyville synagogue. 44-year-old Malik Akram was killed as authorities swarmed the building last night. All of the hostages were able to get out safely and unharmed. Earlier this evening, Greater Manchester Police in Britain announced that they have detained two teenagers in connection to the synagogue standoff. They remain in custody for questioning. However, there's no word on any connection between Akram and the teenagers. The synagogue standoff lasted nearly 11 hours at Congregation Beth Israel, northeast of Fort Worth. It started yesterday morning during a Shabbat service. Just after 1030, Akram entered the synagogue as the service was being streamed on Facebook and was heard making threats as well as demands with four hostages inside. Just before 12 noon, local authorities arrived and evacuated nearby homes. During the afternoon, the FBI's specialized hostage rescue team arrived. Around 6 p.m., a hostage was released as the sun set. Then just before 930, an explosion and shots were heard at the scene. Our Fox 4 News crew heard what sounded like a flashbang and then gunfire at the building. And then minutes later, the governor announced that all of the hostages were safe. We do believe from our engagement with this subject that he was singularly focused on one issue uh, and it was not specifically related to the Jewish community, uh, but we're continuing to work to find motive and, and we will continue on that path. Federal and local investigators spent the night at the synagogue collecting evidence. The probe continued as well today. The road around Congregation Beth Israel remains closed. Gil Torres is a former FBI special agent. He is joining us now to discuss the latest in the investigation. And Gil, I wanted to start off by asking you about the difficult situation that law enforcement faced yesterday. We know the hostage taker was heard on the live stream demanding the release of a Pakistani neuroscientist, uh, Fia Siddiqui, who is in federal prison for the attempted murder of, of U.S. officials in Afghanistan. That's a demand that clearly was not going to be fulfilled. So what sorts of tactics can law enforcement use to essentially keep buying time without upsetting the suspect over the course of, of roughly 10 hours? Well, uh, the, the most obvious one or the most uh, uh, used, utilized, would be the use of hostage negotiators. Uh, part of uh, the training for negotiators is to um, develop a rapport and to stall for time. You know, obviously they cannot release uh, Afia Siddiqui, but are there certain things they can give him, even simple things like food and water to try and, uh, I guess, appease him and, and not upset him too much? Pretty much, yes. Uh, you know, food, water, um, you know, even uh, medical attention, certain things that come into play at the time that don't require, let's say, you know, uh, getting, uh, you know, uh, helping him with his egress, uh, escaping or something like that. Uh, certainly, uh, negotiators always want to find out. Uh, they want to have some kind of proof of life. They want to know that everyone is in uh, a good uh, order, that they're safe. And if somebody is in distress, they always try to uh, negotiate to have those released so they can get some kind of medical attention or, uh, you know, to, to be looked at. And we do know there was that one hostage that was uh, released before the others, released around 5 o'clock. And I'd, I'd imagine the law enforcement probably were able to, to use that person to get some information about what was going on inside. Yes, that is a big thing to try to uh, uh, develop and extract as much uh, intel from people who have been held hostage, who were actually in the scene to uh, let them know about uh, if there's anybody else involved, the uh, condition of the other hostages, uh, anything that they observed that was uh, that could be of value to uh, eventually a tactical team coming in and maybe uh, trying to neutralize the situation. The FBI special agent in charge said that the, the hostage takers' demands were related to that one specific issue. We believe that to be the, the release of, of Siddiqui. And they were not specifically focused on the Jewish community. So, so what are some of the motives that investigators are going to be looking at in terms of why exactly this congregation w was targeted? Well, th there could be several reasons. Uh, I, for one, do not believe that this was an anti-Semitic uh, act. 
I think this was pretty much a platform. And this was his, uh, if you will, his pulpit to, to uh, try to, uh, at the very least, try to make, uh, uh, get this individual, uh, Dr. Siddiqui, uh, released, uh, get attention to his uh, concerns, his cause. Um, and I think that uh, he went in there knowing, uh, at least through some of the things that were said and through the media, that, uh, that he was likely not going to come out of this alive. So um, this was a little different in most than in most situations and uh, in other churches and synagogues, um, the actors usually have a different agenda. And they they shoot and they they wound and they kill people. Here, this individual didn't do that. And Gil, tell us about what you know about this the hostage, hostage rescue team. Um, we know that you know 50 or 60 members were flown in from the D.C. area. Um, brought yes, in for this this situation, and they've been described as the crown jewel of the organization. How how specially trained is this team? The the hostage rescue team is to me synonymous to the uh, team six uh, situation for military actions. I think that the hostage rescue team is, is highly highly trained. They're very sophisticated. They dedicate themselves to. I mean, this is SWAT team on steroids. They are very, very much trained for this kind of situation. Our thanks to former FBI Special Agent Gil Torres. President Biden was asked about the synagogue standoff today while volunteering at a food bank in Philadelphia with First Lady Jill Biden. He called it an act of terrorism. He said he has spoken with Attorney General Merrick Garland about the rise of anti-Semitism in the country. I also told him that I wanted to make sure we got the word out to synagogues and, and places of worship that we're not going to tolerate this, that we have this capacity to deal with assaults on particularly the anti-Semitism that has grown up.